The nations of the Pacific are on the front line of climate change. Scattered across the largest ocean in the world, these fragile, culturally diverse island states are united by common threats to their climate. Rising sea levels, changing rainfall patterns, increasingly intense tropical cyclones, and warming and acidification of coastal waters. The Pacific Adaptation to Climate Change Project has assessed the vulnerability of 14 Pacific Island nations and has begun responding to these needs. Its goal is to increase their resilience to climate change by developing adaptation techniques for three key areas, water, food, and the coastal zone. Coastal zones are the crucible of climate change. Increased ocean temperatures, rising sea levels, and amplified tidal surges all converge to present serious challenges to our traditional relationship with this crucial ecosystem. The coastal zones of the Pacific are among the most vulnerable in the world. With most people living in these low elevation areas where land meets ocean. The Pacific is also a region of high dependence on coastal zones for shipping and transport, and subsistence and commercial fishing. The urbanization of the coasts magnifies pressures on this fragile zone. It alters natural drainage flows, causes sinking of coastal lands, and displaces mangroves as well as other natural barriers to erosion. In the smallest Pacific Island countries, coastal zones are the only means of accessing the outside world and neighboring communities. PEC pilot sites are climate-proofing harbors, outer island airstrips and airports, shipping lanes, coastal roads, as well as revegetating climate-sensitive coasts. Flooded roads in the Federated States of Micronesia and Vanuatu have been reconstructed, restoring access to hospitals, schools, and harbors. A custom-built coastal calculator was engineered to predict and prevent future climate change impacts on coastal infrastructure, ensuring that the Cook Islands' rebuilt harbour in Mangaia can withstand future climate impacts for the next 100 years. Seawalls and natural buffer zones have been constructed in Samoa to prevent future seawater inundation. Revegetation with native plants serves as a carbon-negative means of preventing erosion. To complement work on the ground, PAC is also working to integrate climate change adaptation techniques into policy at the level of both local and national governments in order that sustainable development become an intrinsic part of future decision making for the Pacific. Beyond this, PAC is translating its learning to a knowledge base that can be utilized by people who are faced with similar climate challenges worldwide. The impact of climate change affects the poorest people in the poorest nations sooner and more profoundly, exacerbating any pre-existing economic and political stresses they may already feel. But climate change presents both a challenge and an opportunity. Green, low emission, climate change resilient strategies can reduce poverty and grow the local economy over the long run. The PAC project is a great start. We need to do more. PAC is working to help communities adapt to climate change with pilot sites in 14 Pacific Island nations. Supported by the United Nations Development Program with funding from the Global Environment Facilities Special Climate Change Fund and additional funding from the Government of Australia. PAC is executed by the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme, 
and supported by the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, Climate Change Capacity Development Program. Exploring adaptation methods in three key areas. PAC is building resilience to climate change.